Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a thrift flip video featuring IOD's new fall and winter release. In today's video, I'm gonna show you all of the new products and I'm gonna be using some of them to upcycle my thrifted finds. Also, in this video, I am gonna be using IOD's paint inlay for the very first time. That is Iron Orchid Designs newest invention and you're supposed to be able to use them up to three or four times so i am putting that to the test in this video and one more thing if you love these products and would like to see more ideas this video is part of a fall winter release playlist so in the description below i will have a link to the playlist where you can see all these other creators and how they use these specific products and to give you even more diy ideas and inspiration i know y'all are gonna love it let's get started with today's projects this season they have four new molds they have this beautiful detailed snowflake one this amazing ornament one that i think you could actually use year round and I love this one with the beautiful reindeer. I see so many possibilities with this. And this is the Holly Lane mode. And this is the one that I am actually going to be using today. If you have ornaments or Christmas decor that is not quite your style anymore, do not throw it away. You can just embellish it, paint it, and turn it into something that is more your style. I'm going to be using IOD air dry clay in my molds and I'm going to be using the little smaller hollies. So you want to add a little bit of cornstarch to your molds before you put in the clay. That way it doesn't stick. After you've applied the cornstarch to the molds that you're going to be using, you're going to go ahead and just push in your air dry clay. And the IOD molds has a micro rim. So all I do is I just rub my finger along the edges and it just easily removes all of the excess clay. And then I just wiggle the mold a little bit and the clay pops right out and the molds are so detailed and so beautiful. I want to really transform these little pictures from a farmhouse style into something totally different. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the jute twine hangers and I'm gonna be painting these. I'm gonna be using fusion mineral paint in the color French eggshell. This is an absolutely beautiful color. Now while I am doing all this, my little air dry clay molds will start to dry a little bit, but they will still be very pliable and be able to bend around my little watering cans. You just don't want to let them dry completely completely before you apply them to a round surface. So I'm just going to apply one quick coat on these pieces. The fusion mineral paint has excellent coverage and it also has a built-in sealer so it is perfect for this project and of course I'll have a link in the description below to all the products that I used on today's video. Once my paint has dried I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue to glue my clay molds to the pictures like i said the clay is not dry it is still bendable so i can bend it perfectly to the surface and i personally love the color of iod's air dry clay so i'm not going to add anything else to this piece you could white wax it you could paint your molds but i think that the white clay pairs beautifully with this color paint and it is exactly the look that i am going for for. The last thing I'm going to do is add this beautiful off-white lace ribbon to these ornaments and I think this is the perfect touch to turn these farmhouse watering cans into a more French country style. So y'all let me know what y'all think of the transformation here. For these next projects, we're going to be using the Christmas Valley Transfer Book. It is eight pages and every page is full of beautiful transfers. This one has a lot of great big transfers and small transfers, lots of greenery and lots of birds that I think you could really use year around. I think this is a really, really great transfer book. 
I want to make my own Christmas collection, so I'm going to be using this teapot that is already black. I'm going to be using this rolling pin and this little paddle spoon thing, whatever it is. Like I said, I want to make this look like a collection, so I want the wood tones to match. So the first thing I'm going to do is add antiquing wax to all my wood. That way it'll be darker like the little wood handle on the kettle. There is a lot of greenery on this transfer, so I just picked out four pieces of greenery that were similar. That way I could add them to my three different pieces and they would look like a cohesive collection. I like to take painter's tape and actually tape my transfers to the piece. That way I could lay out my arrangement, move it around like I want before I actually apply the transfer to the piece. Once I have my transfers and arrangement that I like, you remove the white backer and every transfer comes with a transfer tool and you just rub this over your transfer and you will see it releasing from your backer and onto your piece. It is really easy. I am doing it on a curved surface and I have no issues at all. Now, when you pull up the clear piece, you wanna make sure to do it slowly. That way, if any of the transfer did not come off, you just put the clear piece back down, rub it over again, with your transfer tool and then it should be good now that I'm finished with the teapot I'm gonna move on to the rolling pin and the little spoon so I just did the same thing I put them in the arrangement that I want you can actually go around pieces very easy so I'm gonna bring this transfer over to the back of the spoon as well and it worked out perfectly and now I'm gonna do the rolling pin again another curved surface and I had no issues I I think the transfer looks so pretty on this rolling pin. Y'all let me know what y'all think. I want to add a little bit of black to tie into the black teapot. So I'm going to paint the handles of my rolling pin black. And I'm also going to paint just a small portion of the handle on the spoon black as well. And once my paint has dried, I'm going to distress the handles just a little bit. And then these pieces will be done. So y'all let me know if y'all thought that I turned these three different pieces into one cohesive Christmas kitchen collection. This new release has three different stamps. First is the cozy stamps, which has all the warm winter stuff. And then the pretty and plaid stamp has all these different plaids for you to choose from. And then they have the heavenly stamp, which has these beautiful angels and wings and cherubs and florals. And this is a stamp that I am going to be using. I have this old book of sheet music. The pages are very large, I believe 11 by 14, and the paper is very thick. So that makes it perfect for creating artwork. The first time that you use a stamp, you just want to rub it lightly with some sandpaper and this will help the ink adhere. So as soon as I open a new stamp, I just sand the whole entire thing. That way it's ready to go. You only have to do this one time. I'm going to remove the stamp that I want to use from the backer. Now, the first time you pull the stamps off, you have to use a little bit of elbow grease, but do not worry. You are not going to break these stamps. So I'm going to put it on top of my thin mount. I kind of centered it because that'll make it easier to stamp it if I have it centered on the thin mount. And now I'm using the IOD ink in the color tomato and inking up my stamp. And then I'm going to place it exactly where I want it to go on my music sheet. And then I like to use the IOD brayer to go over the stamp just to make sure all the ink has kind of been pushed in a little bit. And look how perfectly this came out. It already looks really good as is, but this stamp comes with these two cute little cherubs that I really want to try out. So I'm gonna put them down exactly where I want them on my music sheet, and then I'm gonna take my thin mount, and I'm going to pick them up, and then I'm going to ink them with my red ink, and that way when I turn them over and put them down, they will already be exactly where I want them. You could absolutely frame this artwork, but I actually want to create a hanger for it, 
and this is just a pants hanger from ikea but i think they make cute little art hangers but i do want to age it because my music sheet is very aged and this pants hanger looks too new so all i'm going to do is apply antiquing wax to the whole thing to the wood part and the metal part and it'll make it look nice and age and pair beautifully with my antique music sheets All right, guys, let's try the IOD paint inlay. So this is the Christmas design and it comes in big sheets, kind of like the transfers. And if you look at the back, you can see you get eight pages of Christmas designs on this one. They have so many options here. And this is actually the one that I'm going to be using in this video. I want to experiment and see how many uses I can get out of the paint inlay. So I'm going to be making quite a few signs. I'm just using fence boards and I cut them 16 inches long. And then I'm going to be using some smaller pieces of wood, wood glue and my brad nailer to attach the two pieces of fencing. And guys, most of the time you can get fencing for free off the side of the road. So it's a really inexpensive way to make your own custom signs. The paint inlay image is just a little bit bigger than my sign and I feel like the days that the Christmas tree farm is going to be open is not really necessary. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that off. These are the products that I'm going to be using. Dixie Bales chalk mineral paint in the color fluff, the Klingon F30 brush, and the turquoise iris water girl this came in very very handy when using the paint inlay you do want to use like a mineral chalk type paint so the dixie bell paint will be perfect i'm just kind of spritzing everything i just find it makes the paint move so much better if i add a, just a little bit of water and so the water girl combined with the klingon brush oh my gosh y'all I painted these signs so quick. So if you don't have these two products, I definitely highly recommend them. And of course, I will have a link in the description below to all the products that I used in today's video. I want my signs to have two coats of paint. So the first coat has dried and I'm applying the second. Now it doesn't matter how many coats of paint you put on your piece. However, the paint inlay needs to go into wet paint. So I'm applying my second coat of paint and now it is ready to apply the paint inlay. I tried rubbing it, but y'all using the IOD brayer definitely did the trick. It really pushed that paint inlay into the wet paint. And then once you have it all smoothed out, you want to take your mister and you want to dampen your paint inlay paper. You could also use a wet rag, but I found just misting it was much easier and worked a lot better. So that's what I would recommend. So after you apply your paint inlay and you mist it, you wanna let it dry completely. So at this point it has dried completely and now we are going to mist it again and that will prep it and get ready to actually remove the paper. So I am misting it and we are about to remove the paper and see if this works. I was so, so nervous that this was not gonna work out. But it did, and I think it looks amazing. It was starting to get a little bit tough to pull up, so I just misted it a little bit more. I was worried about tearing the paper, but honestly, I don't think you need to worry about that. This paper was pretty tough because I've pulled on it a few times, and it never tore, not one time. So although it's a little bit of a process, it was really, really easy, and I just worked on other projects in between drying time. I think it came out amazing for the first time. Now let's see what happens on the second application. I'm adding my second coat of paint and I did not really let the paint inlay dry before I put it on again. And you will see it worked out perfectly. There were some applications where I had more time in between and it did end up drying and it also worked good. So I think either way works fine. You can use it wet 
or you can use it dry for your next application. So I just really wanted to point that out because I thought that was really interesting that you could use it, you know, wet or dry. Definitely the brayer helps out to smooth out all those wrinkles. So we're going to mist it and then we're going to let it dry and we're going to pull it up again and see how the second time comes out. Every time you use it, it's going to have a more distressed look. So the second application is going to be more distressed than the first and the third should be more distressed than the second and so on. So that's why I really want to continue to use it over and over again to see how many uses you can get out of this one paint inlay. And the second application looks really good. So let's move on to the third. I've already painted it apply the inlay, missed it, let it dry, miss it again. Now all we need to do is pull it up. I also want to mention if you are not going to be using it over and over again, like I am in this video, if you just use it one time, you just want to put it your inlay off to the side and let it dry. Once it's dry, you can put it back in the package. That way you still have it to use later on. So it's definitely getting more distressed, but I think this looks really, really good still. So this is the third application. Now let's move on to the fourth. You're about to see that the fourth application also came out really good. It was a lot more distressed. I was thinking the fourth application would look really pretty on a Christmas tree box or a Christmas crate where you were going for like a more rustic distress look. But this, you can definitely still see everything and I thought it looked really good. So I decided let's try a fifth time and see how it comes out. For the fifth application, I decided to just do one coat of paint because I knew it was going to be very distressed. So I thought a more distressed background would add to that look. So I'm just going to put on one coat of paint and then I'm going to apply the paint inlay. Now keep in mind that I did crumple it up and throw it away and it stayed in the trash can overnight. And then I decided, you know what? I want to try it again. So um, that might have added to the look here because I did find there was a lot more wrinkles on this application. So I'm going to apply it to the paint. We're going to mist it, let it dry, mist it again and pull it up and see what it looks like. You're about to see it came out very distressed and faded. The Christmas trees barely even showed up, but I definitely want to show y'all this because I feel like the red and the black is still kicking and a lot of the transfers in this book were red and black. So you may be able to get a fifth application out of these if you are going for that very muted look on a piece. I think it may work and there's no harm in trying a fifth application, but you can kind of see all those crinkles from me crumpling it up. So do not do that. <laughs> guys i hope that y'all enjoyed today's video please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project also let me know if you feel a little bit more at ease using iod paint inlays i know i get very nervous using a new product and i am always shocked at how easy iod products are to use so definitely if you have not tried iod paint inlays y'all check it out it was so so easy to use i will definitely be using lots more of these in my videos and of course if you are interested in any of the products that i use in today's video i will have a link to everything in the description below 
Also in the description will be a link to the playlist and also IOD's YouTube page. So if you are interested in more DIY and inspiration using these products, y'all definitely go check that out. Once again, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope y'all were inspired. Y'all have a great day and I will see y'all next time.